For this class, I will be teaching 10th grade health in a public school. The unit we are in is communication, and today's class explores abusive relationships and the importance of noticing the signs and learning tips regarding how to help yourself or someone you care about. I purposefully chose to do this lesson later in the year so kids feel more comfortable talking about difficult topics with each other. Since it's April, we have had time to get to know each other and establish trust in the class. For the lesson plan, I will play some hip music as the kids are walking in, because I want to be a cool teacher, and I'll write a do now on the board. Today's do now is to partner up with someone you feel you know the least and ask them about their weekend. When everyone arrives, I'll turn down the music and everyone will share a little bit about their partner's weekend. Then we'll get into it. First, I'll give them a quiz that will help them and me gauge how well they can identify red flags in a relationship. It's not going to affect their grade, it's simply for them to see where they stand before the lesson. Then, we'll need to split off into mini discussion groups. However, I don't want it to be a boring count off by fours to split into groups. Instead, I'll tell everyone to find their partner from this morning, then figure out which one of them is more like a mountain and which one of them is more like a river. The mountains go on one side of the room and the rivers go to the other. Then, partner up with someone on the same side as you and figure out which of you is more like a rock and which of you is more like a tree. At this point, we will have four even groups. While I grade their quizzes, which I emphasize again is not for a grade, I will ask them in their groups to make a list of 10 possible red flags in a relationship. When they are done, get a scribe to write them up on the board. If there are repeats, simply do a check mark next to them. Once I'm done grading the quizzes, we'll look at the board and I'll lead a group discussion on why these are red flags, and we'll talk more in depth about the ones that have multiple check marks. Then I'll give them two different scenarios. After they see the scenario, they will discuss in their group whether or not the people in the scenarios were demonstrating abusive behavior. After we discuss the level of abuse demonstrated, I'll ask each group to come up with a mini script of their own scenarios. I'll let the groups draw out of a hat of what type of scenario they should write. There will be four slips of paper. Healthy conflict, borderline, unhealthy, and abusive. Then they'll present and the other groups will weigh in and try to guess which slip of paper the group drew out of the hat and why. Next, I'm going to hand out another copy of the quiz. The students will retake it. While I grade it, they can have a few minutes of free time to do whatever they want. Next, I'll hand back both of their quizzes and then open the floor to reactions, discoveries, or realizations they may have had about the topic at hand. We will talk in depth about strategies to help yourself or a friend and ways you may be able to avoid these relationships altogether. After this, I will share where the students can go for help and reiterate that my door is always open. I will also remind students about the anonymous feedback box that I have in my classroom. The core purpose of schooling that this lesson is aiming to implement is social-emotional and safe environment. According to Piaget, since these students are above the ages of 8 through 12, they are well past their concrete operational stage. This means that their abstract thinking is less of a hindrance to their learning, although personal experience still matters in order to apply concepts, which is why I invited the students to write and act out their own scenarios. According to Vygotsky, meaning isn't located in the individual. Rather, meaning is constructed through interaction. Because of this, I put a large emphasis on group discussion instead of just lecturing. Elaborative interrogation plays a role in this lesson throughout the discussions and the creation of original scenarios because it helps the students directly apply how and why the information is true. Memory is a fickle thing, especially for adolescents, which is why I switched up the modes of learning. The students go from partner work to group discussion to individual time to lecture to small group discussion to creative thinking to free time back to individual time. Switching it up also might help keep students engaged. Also, it's important to keep in mind some students may be more auditory, visual, or kinesthetic learners, so I included activities that stimulated all three. According to the social cognitive theory, it's important to have social comparison to help motivate oneself. Presenting each other's original scenarios helps promote healthy social comparison. In my opinion, the best motivation is direct result. It is important for the students to take the quiz pre- and post-lesson for them to see how much they learned. Also, this feeds into a universal design for learning because there may be steep variability in the learning of the students. The quiz allows us to compare the students' progress slash lack thereof to themselves instead of each other. 
Tasks that are far too easy diminish motivation. This is why I challenged the students. For example, I asked them to think of 10 red flags instead of just three. The only educational technology used in this lesson was the projector for showing videos of abusive scenarios. Other than that, it solely depended on human interaction. I am a strong believer in the importance of developing social skills, and I feel as though technology could really get in the way of that. In other lessons, I would be more open to the use of technology, but since this topic is so heavily emotional, I feel person-to-person -person is the best route. If anything, I can make the quizzes online quizzes to save paper, but I think the small portion of free time as I was grading the second quiz is beneficial on so many levels.